Hi there, welcome to your second lesson. Today we're going to ride and I want to just go over the same concepts we worked on in our groundwork lesson, but under saddle. So if you remember in our first groundwork lesson, we worked on the concept of go when you go, want to go and whoa when you want to go. Also, we worked on a little bit of speed control. The last thing that we talked about in the last lesson was the mechanics of the horse's walk and trot. So for today, what I'm gonna do is we'll just quickly go over the mechanics of the walk and the trot and the woe and the go and a little bit of speed control. But I do wanna add in the subject of our correct posting diagonal. It's one of my favorite subjects and I'm hoping that I can convince you that it is an important subject um, and that you'll be very conscientious of riding on the correct posting diagonal. So for those of you who are watching this video series and just learning a formal exercise of riding, um, I'm hoping that this video will help you to have a better understanding of your posting diagonal, not only the how, but the why. And for those of you that are watching this series because you're more advanced riders and wanna get back to the basics, if you think that this lesson's a little bit too basic for you, I'm just gonna ask you to hang in there with me until the end because I'm gonna have a fun little challenge for you that maybe um, will look easy, but once you get to the barn and try it, it might not seem as easy as it looks, okay? So one thing before we get started that I wanna advocate is when you're riding, anytime that you're on your horse or anybody else's horse, that you should wear your riding helmet, a properly fitting helmet, okay? So you see if I can shake my head around, my, head, my helmet stays nice and still on my head and I have a nicely fitted harness. So I hope that you will also wear your helmet when you ride. This is my horse tattoo. He's a 22 year old Lusitano gelding. I've had him for the last 17 years and um, knock on wood, I've never had an accident with him, but even so I wear my helmet every time I ride, just in case, because you just never know what unexpected thing might happen and you may have an accident and you want to protect that noggin. Okay, so I'm gonna get started. Uh, with tattoo and first things first I just want to show you that when I pick up my reins I use the method of one hand helps the other so that I never have to let go of the rein and I don't have to lose contact when I'm moving and it's just safer that way for me to keep the reins in my hands at all time instead of sometimes people like to sort of crawl their hand up like that but we're just going to do one hand helps the other slide those hands forward all right in the spirit of go when i say go i'm just going to give tattoo a little squeeze with the calf of my leg and maybe a little kiss if he needs a little extra pressure when i squeeze him he needs to walk off and as soon as he does walk off i'm going to take that pressure from my leg away so a little squeeze the leg and off we go all right so i'm just going to go to the middle of the arena and walk a big 20 meter circle and I'm hoping that you have spent some time watching your horse walk and getting a really good sense of the mechanics of the walk so that when you ride now, you can start to feel the four beats of the walk and each footfall hitting the ground separately. And you can even peek down at your horse's inside shoulder so that you can start to feel what we talked about last time is when his right front foot hits the ground, he's gonna make a hoof print. And I know that when that shoulder comes back, all the way back at me, his inside hind leg is coming up to meet it and hopefully getting that back footprint into the front footprint or maybe even a little bit of overstep. Now Tattoo's walk isn't as big and swinging as little baby Esprit's was. So I have to sometimes work a little bit harder on my speed control. See if I can get Tattoo to go a little bit faster in the walk and a little bit stretching down to his neck and his back. So he gets a little bit of overstep, hopefully at least getting that back foot into his foot hoof print. I'm just gonna change direction and let Tattoo go a little bit the other way. I also wanted to mention that before I got on tattoo today, I did practice the exercise, exercise of woe and go in hand. 
just to get myself and my horse a little bit warmed up before I hopped up here, and also to get a little bit of discipline for Tattoo so he's not only warm but paying attention to me and ready to work. So as I'm walking around now, I just want to quickly go over my riding position in the correct riding position. We want to make sure that we have a good riding position, not only to keep you safe and balanced, but to allow your horse to do their job as easily as possible. So you want to think about when you're sitting up on your horse that you can create a vertical line from your head, your shoulder, your hip, and your heel. I want to make sure that my foot stays under my hip for balance and that my upper body stays nice and tall so that I sit up tall and make Tattoo's job as easy as possible. One thing I like to think about is to keep the front of me and the back of me the same length so that I'm nice and balanced and sitting directly down on my sit bones and that my feet are right underneath me so that I could maybe stand up a little bit in the saddle and balance myself up in the saddle. We'll be talking more about that in later videos and do some exercises that help you to develop good posture muscles and a good riding position. Definitely your walking, warming up at the walk, is a great time to create a little bit of discipline for you and your horse. Your horse has to go when you say go, speed up when you say speed up, and you have to really focus on the very best riding position you can. All right, so we're going. Tattoo is a good boy. He moved off my leg when I asked him if I squeeze a little harder or make a kiss, he'll go a little faster if I ask him to go faster. Now we want to make sure that our horse has brakes, that he's going to whoa when I say whoa. So if you'll notice, I have kind of a little bit of a long rein today, but it's a passive contact. I can feel the bit in Tattoo's mouth, and he can feel my hand at the end of this rein. So when I ask my horse to stop, all I'm going to do is stop myself from following him. Notice I didn't pull back on the reins. Tattoo does enough pulling for the both of us. So we're gonna try that again. I'm gonna ask him to go, and he's gonna walk on. And I'm following. You can notice that my hip is nice and soft, and following the movement of the walk. Now when I wanna stop, I'm gonna stop my hip from going, and stop my body from going forward with the horse. If you have a horse that's not quite as sensitive to that as Tattoo, and you need a little bit more pressure to get your horse to stop. You can, once you've stopped your body from going forward, you can close your fingers, you can hug your elbows into your side and that helps stop your body from going forward. The horse will bump into that because you'll no longer be going forward. If you have good passive contact, he'll feel that you've stopped going with him and he'll stop. All right, so now we can move in to the subject matter of posting trot and your correct posting diagonal. Now a lot of people learn to post early on in their riding and they learn they're up, down, up, down. They stand, sit, stand, sit in the rhythm of the trot. We remember from our first lesson, the trot is a two beat gait and the diagonal pairs work together. So while I'm trotting around, Tattoo will work all his costumes needs to know. While I'm trotting around, I want you to notice that I am rising up with Tattoo's outside front shoulder. So as it's going forward, I'm rising up. I'm rising one, two, one, two, one, two, in the rhythm of Tattoo's trot. Now, most importantly, what I want you to notice is that when I am all the way up off of Tattoo's back, his inside hind leg is also off the ground. So his outside front, inside hind, off the ground at the same time. And when they're both off the ground, I am all the way up out of my saddle. Now, one thing, 
that we might not have learned at the beginning of our riding lessons. We learned her follow the rhythm, up, down, up, down. Then we learned to look down and follow that outside front leg, rise and fall with the leg on the wall, all that fun stuff. But did anybody ever tell you why you were following that leg? Now we just talked about how Tattoo's inside hind leg is off the ground while I'm off his back. That's the reason why I want to be off my horse's back when I'm turning circle, or if I'm just turning a corner, go straight. I want to turn another corner, or maybe I want to ride a small circle. I want to stay off his inside hind leg to help him keep his balance. Okay, so that's the reason we want to be correct. And another reason to be very conscientious about your posting diagonal is because when you change direction, so let's say I wasn't being very conscientious about my posting diagonal, I just did all those circles to the left on the correct posting diagonal. I'm not really paying attention now, and I'm gonna pick up my trot to the right, and I'm going to post on the wrong posting diagonal now. So you can see now, I'm still following his right front and his left hind. So when I'm all the way up, off the saddle, I'm sitting on Tattoo's inside hind leg, which means he has to push that leg down a little bit harder in order to keep the trot, and it's a little harder for him to stay balanced. So, if I were to do that, if I went left correct and right incorrectly, I'm unevenly working my horse, which we don't want to do. We want our horses to develop physically as even as possible. So if you're posting along to the right and you look down and you see you're following that inside shoulder, the way you switch to the correct one is you just sit one, two. And now I'm following that outside shoulder. So this sitting and switching comes easily to some people and not as easily to others. So I'm gonna do it a couple of times. So if you see it, maybe it'll be easier for you to feel it when you ride. So one, two, now I'm incorrect again. I'll come around to a smaller circle and one, two, now I'm correct. All right, so you, uh, in the spirit of wanting to get our horse nice and healthy and evenly developed on both sides, maybe you're somebody that has a horse that's a little bit out of shape and you wanna get the horse ready for maybe more sitting trot. If you post along on the wrong posting diagonal, it's actually a good exercise to strengthen your horse's hind leg. But just if you do it, just make sure you do it consistently on both sides. Okay, so I'm just going to give Tattoo a little bit of a break. And we're going to talk about your challenge for today. So while I'm walking and letting Tattoo have his breather, I am going to peek down at his shoulder. I don't normally advocate looking down. As long as you're looking for something, we can look down. So what we're going to look for right now is Tattoo's outside shoulder as it's swinging forward. I want to try to get a good sense by looking at it when it's moving forward. So it's going now, 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 now. So here's your challenge. Once you've gotten really good at posting and doing your up, down, up, down and following your horse's rhythm, and then understanding which leg you're supposed to follow forward, I am going to challenge you to pick up your trot, sit a few steps, and then try to rise up on the correct posting diagonal from the very first rise. Okay? So the easiest way to think about this is when you see that outside shoulder all the way back at you, that's when you want to start 
rising up out of the saddle so that you go forward with it. Don't wait for the shoulder to go all the way forward and then go. Go forward with it. So as I go by, I'm going to pick up my strut. I'm looking for that left shoulder. It's going forward now. I'm going to sit a few steps and I'm going to follow it forward. Looks easy, right? <laughs> so if that did come easily to you, we're going to make the challenge a little bit harder. But for now, I'm going to sit and walk. You catch your woes when I say whoa. I just stopped my body from trotting with him. And he stopped. So again, I'm going to just peek down at that shoulder as it's going forward. Then I'm going to sit the trot and go forward with it. So that I'm on the right posting diagonal as soon as I start trotting. A lot of times what happens is people start trotting, they pick up the wrong posting diagonal, they spend a lot of time looking down, trying to figure out which leg is going. Finally, full circle later, they're like, oh, yep, I'm wrong, gotta switch it. <laughs> which I suppose is all fine and good, but if you decide that you want to go in a horse show and do a training level test, or maybe you're a hunt seat rider, and you want to go in an equitation class, you want to make sure you get that posting diagonal correct right away. So this is a really good exercise for you to practice so that you start building your awareness of where your horse's legs are and then having better feel for where your horse's legs are so that you ask the horse to trot, follow that right shoulder up now as I change direction, and that you're right away correct so you can pick your eyes up look where you're going and again that trot practicing our very best riding position and now we we'll try again but this time i'm going to peek down to get a sense of where that leg is and then i'm going to pick my eyes up i'm going to practice using my peripheral vision so that i just have a nice soft eye i can see the walls of the arena around me. I can see my horse's neck and ears without looking directly at it. And hopefully I can a little bit see my horse's shoulders. When you pick your eyes up and practice your peripheral vision. Start trying to be a little bit more aware of how your horse feels underneath you. Try to feel that outside shoulder moving forward and keep track of it that way. All right, so the same challenge, once you get good at looking and coming right up on the correct posting diagonal, you're going to try the same challenge without looking directly down at his shoulder. Just stay eyes up, and I'm going to come towards you so you can see I'm not going to cheat. I'm not going to look down. I'm just going to feel for that outside shoulder coming up and following it forward. Now, you're going to find that this challenge is easier in one direction than the other. Usually, most horses go a little bit better, a little bit more naturally to their left. So sometimes they help you because they're better balanced and bending and turning the correct direction. They help kind of pop you up on the correct posting diagonal. When you change direction to go right, sometimes it might be a little bit more challenging. You may have to spend a little bit more time in this direction. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use my purple vision to look around the arena, see my horse's neck, my horse's ears, and try to feel his shoulders, his trot. Then, and I'm going to post up on the right posting diagonal without peeking down and get a really good feel for that. And this is a challenge that we'll take into sitting trot, into rising trot, and later videos where we add a little bit of challenge into your posting trot. Okay, so I'm hoping that I made a good argument for you to take your posting diagonal seriously. If you learned a long time ago how to follow your horse's trot and which leg to follow but didn't know the why, I'm hoping that you learned something a little bit new today. So go on off to the barn, have a good ride. Don't forget to go over to my website and print off the notes for this lesson. 
If you like this lesson, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and enjoy your ride. Thanks for watching.